I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, we're talking about how to wire up your flight controller. Which flight controller? Your flight controller. Any flight controller. You see, it turns out that there are certain things in common between almost all flight controllers that mean that if you understand the basics, you can actually figure out how to wire them up all by yourself. And that means you don't have to rely on a wiring diagram that maybe isn't exactly what you needed. You can make your own wiring diagram. Sound like a lot to promise? It's not. You can do it. Stay tuned. This video is one of the last ones in this playlist that you, this video is in a playlist. Did you know that? And this playlist is flight controller wiring for beginners. And the point of this playlist is so many people struggle to figure out how to wire up one of these flight controllers. You got all these pads and you got a receiver and a video transmitter. Where does everything go? And it turns out that if you understand the fundamentals, you can figure out where things go. Flight controllers are not as different and unique as it seems. They have some very common things. And if you learn to look at the common things, then you can figure out how to wire them up. And that's the point of this playlist. If you're just now coming across this video, then I really recommend that you go back, link in the video description to the whole playlist. I think everybody who gets into the hobby and starts building quadcopters should watch and study this this whole playlist. I really feel like there's a lot of fundamental information there, not just how to wire it up, but what's a UART and what gets connected to a UART and voltage regulators. It's all in here. If you haven't watched the whole playlist, definitely do that. What we're talking about in this video is current sensing. And when you set up current sensing, there are two main metrics that you're going to get. And the first one is amps. How much current are you pulling at this moment? Now, here's why amps are useful. Amps help you answer the question of how big of an ESC do you need? If you know that your quadcopter pulls 120 amps or something like that, you're going to need a bigger ESC than if it pulls only like 80 amps. So it helps you size your ESCs. Is your battery C rating sufficient for your motor and prop combination? If you know that you're pulling a lot of amps, you need a battery with a higher C rating. If you're not pulling very many amps, you can use a battery with a lower C rating. How does the quad's weight affect the energy required to fly? This is a little bit of a deeper question that you'll get into as you're tuning. Uh, as you like, For example, if you put a GoPro onto your quad or if you use an 1800 milliamp hour battery versus a 1300 milliamp hour battery, how does that additional weight cause the quad? to draw more current or less current and how much. With current sensing, you'll also get milliamp hours. That's the other uh, the other metric that you're going to get. It's abbreviated commonly to MAH, milliamp hours, which is basically like a fuel gauge for your battery. Uh, it tells you when your battery is getting empty. It tells you if your battery is giving its rated capacity and whether the health of the battery has declined. Now, those last two points deserve a little bit more explanation. When we fly, how do you know when you're done flying? You finish flying, one of the ways you know you're done is when the battery gets down to a low voltage. Typically the low voltage that I look at is about 3.5 volts per cell. So while I'm flying, I'll notice uh, for a four cell that'll be about 14 volts. I'll notice that the battery is getting down to 14 volts and I'll come in for a landing. Um, and when I land and the motors stop, typically then the battery, the voltage will recover a little bit. When it's being, uh, when you're running the quad, the voltage will sag. And then after you land, it'll recover and it'll typically be resting around 3.7 or 3.8 volts per cell. Well, that's about 15, 15.2 volts, maybe something like that. Uh, I look at the milliamp hours that came out of the battery then, and I use that to evaluate if the battery is healthy and if it's suited for the for the task that I'm using it. Let's say the battery is rated at 1300 milliamp hours. That's what it says on the label. If I see that the battery is at 14 volts and I land and I see that I only pulled 800 milliamp hours from a 1300 milliamp hour battery, something isn't right. Maybe the battery C rating is too low and I was getting a lot of voltage sag. And so I hit that 14 volts before I had fully discharged the battery. Or maybe the battery is just old or damaged and it's just not able to deliver the capacity that it's supposed to deliver. Milliamp hours gives you that perspective, whereas normally you land at 14 volts or whatever your voltage is that you stop at 
that you don't know how many milliamp hours you got. You just kind of go, well, I felt like I got a little bit of a shorter flight, but maybe I was just hitting the throttle real hard. Mm. Milliamp hours is really useful for, for knowing how healthy your batteries are and how well suited they are to the, the, the demands you're putting on them. Now we're talking about voltage sensing and it's really easy to have the battery voltage appear in an on-screen display or it otherwise measured the battery voltage. And the reason for this is that when you measure volts, we measure volts in parallel to the load. That's an electrical circuitry thing. And it means it's really easy to just kind of tap into the voltage and measure it wherever. And voltage is the bare minimum information you need to know to know when a battery is discharged. Amps, on the other hand, are difficult to measure because amps are measured in series to the load. And what that means is that current has to flow through the amp sensor. You can't just tap into the circuit like you can with volts. You have to put something in line with the load. And that can be difficult to do if it's not already built into the circuit, like from the factory. However, current sensing is very desirable because it gives a much more nuanced and complete information about the vehicle's performance. The way that current sensing works is that current flows through a shunt resistor on the board. In this case, we see the current, the shunt resistor is built into the flight controller with some ESCs. You may see a shunt resistor built into the ESC, or there are a few, like if you look at the Diatone GT90, it actually has the shunt resistor built into the XT30 connector. The bottom line is that there is a, a shunt resistor somewhere, which is a very, very low value resistor that is capable of passing a very large amount of current. And that shunt resistor diverts a very small fraction of the current to the, the current sensor. And that diverted current creates a voltage potential on the sensing pin of the current sensor, which is proportional to the magnitude of the current. Basically, the current flows through the shunt resistor. The shunt resistor lets the current sensor know how much current is flowing through the shunt resistor. But the key thing here is that because the current has to flow through the shunt resistor, flight controllers with current sensors built in are very cumbersome to use with 4-in-1 ESCs. And here you can see a photograph of a build I did with a Betaflight F3. It's a little hard, to, it's kind of zoomed in, a little hard to see what's going on. But here's a 4-in-1 ESC right here. Here's the Betaflight F3. And I've got a 12-gauge jumper wire going between them because the current has to flow in from the XT60, that's right here, through the shunt resistor and then out to the ESC. It has to go through this shunt resistor. So the full motor current has to come into the, the Betaflight F3 flight controller or any flight controller in this situation and then go through that shunt resistor to the ESC. Rather than wiring the XT60 directly up to the ESC, uh, it like would make a lot more sense. This is pretty tedious, cumbersome, really unnecessary. It's much better to have the current sensor built into the 4-in-1 ESC and then have the ESC report current to the flight controller via external current sense input. And this whole thing really matters the most when you're dealing with 4-in-1 ESCs. If you've got individual ESCs, then many flight controllers nowadays are made to deal with them because you just solder up the ESCs to one, two, three, four to the ESC pads on the flight controller, the built-in uh, shunt resistor, the built-in current sensor works fine, everything is good. It's only when you start combining these uh, flight controllers with 4-in-1 ESCs that things get a little tedious. Or, if you have a flight controller that doesn't have a built-in current sensor, then the only way to get current sensing is with an external current sensor like we're talking about in this video. Now, there are two types of current sense input that we can have. And the first is analog, which the current information is represented as a zero to 3.3 volt analog voltage. The higher the current, the higher the voltage. In this case, the, the wire is connected to the current sense input pin on the flight controller, and I'll show you some examples of that coming up. If the flight controller has a built-in current sensor, then it typically will not be able to take an external analog current sense input because the analog current sense pin on the flight controller is already taken up by the internal, by the built-in current sensor. And this is gonna be true for basically all of the boards out there like that have a built-in PDB and current sensor, all of the all-in-one boards are typically not going to take external analog current sense inputs. The other way of getting current data into the flight controller is via ESC telemetry. And this is most notably supported on BL Heli 32 ESCs. KISS also does it. Uh, any ESC that supports telemetry can send the current information from the ESC to the flight controller via telemetry. In that case, the ESCs are connected to the flight controller via a UART receive pad 
not via the current sense input pin. And we need to be able to distinguish between analog and ESC telemetry because some ESCs support both and you don't want to get them confused. In this case, in the case of ESC telemetry, ESC current sense is only going to measure the current that flows through the ESC, which is the current that's pulled by the motors. And that matters because current pulled by other devices like the video transmitter and the camera is not going to be accounted for by ESC telemetry. Now we say that, but that's not always going to be true. It depends on how it's wired up. Remember, the current sensor measures any current that flows through its shunt resistor. So in the case of a 4-in-1 ESC, it's possible that it could be wired up. So all of the, if the 4-in-1 ESC is acting as the power source for the flight controller, for the video transmitter, etc., it's certainly possible that the 4-in-1 ESC could be built by the manufacturer so that its current sensor accounted for all of that current. The situation I'm talking about, though, let's imagine a situation where we have individual ESCs, not 4-in-1 those ESCs have current sensors built in and then we've got a flight controller and the video transmitter and the camera and the receiver are all going back to the flight controller. In that case, the current sensor on the ESCs is never going to be able to see the current pulled by the stuff that's connected to the flight controller because that current is not flowing through the ESC. How do you configure this in Betaflight? In the power and battery tab, you're going to select the current meter source and you're either going to select onboard ADC for analog input or you're going to select ESC sensor for ESC telemetry. If you're using ESC telemetry, you also need to have on the ports tab the ESC sensor input configured for whichever UART you connected the ESC telemetry wires to. Bear in mind that ESC telemetry only works if you're using D-Shot. If for some reason you're using multi-shot or one-shot, ESC telemetry isn't going to work. One more thing I need to say here is that if you're using analog current sensing, you're probably going to need to calibrate the current sensor input so that the flight controller knows how much current the you need to calibrate it. Like it's going to read a wildly incorrect number and, you, and the way to calibrate it is given in another video. I've got a link down in the video description for how to calibrate your current sensor. Uh, if you are using ESC telemetry, I have bad news for you. There's no way, as far as I know, to calibrate ESC current sensing DC telemetry current sensing. If there were going to be a way to calibrate it, it would be in BL Heli or KISS. KISS may do it. I don't know about KISS. I know that BL Heli doesn't let you calibrate the current sensor. You just have to count on the manufacturer making things correctly. And fr from what I've seen from the, cons from the uh, building of Betaflight flight controllers with built-in current sensors, oftentimes the, the resistor values are not exactly, they're just not precise enough and the, the current sense needs some tweaking. So I think you can expect that if you're using ESC telemetry, you probably should expect the value to be off by maybe as much as 5 or 10%. Whereas if you're using analog input, you can calibrate the number to be as accurate as you care to. And that may be one reason to prefer analog telemetry, analog current sensing, even if your ESC has the ability to do uh, ESC telemetry. Now let's take a look at some real world examples. Here we're looking at a Maytech F405 flight controller and a DalRC engine 4-in-1 ESC. And you can see the DalRC engine in its pin header here has a current output. Whenever you see something labeled current or CURR, that is analog current sensing that it's referring to. And you can see we've got a similar pin here on the flight controller CUR and that is the current sense input. Notice that the current sense pin is right next to the RSSI pin. If the flight controller has both of those, it'll often be the case that they're right next to each other for for reasons. Current sense, that's it's just that simple. You take this pin here from the plug header and you wire it here and then you set beta flight up as shown above. Here's an example with a Maytec F405 and an AK32 4-in-1 ESC from Akon. And this one is interesting because the Akon AK32 has both analog current sense output and 
ESC telemetry. So you can have your pick. So if you choose to use analog current sensing, it'll be wired, well, pretty much exactly as shown before. Whereas if you choose to use ESC telemetry, then you can use any UART receive pad. So here I've got outlined RX432, and even over here is RX1. You can literally use any of them that you care to, just as, you know, just pick whichever one is free and use it. At this point, some of you are going to ask, oh, could I do both? And in fact, sure, you can. But remember that you can only use one of them at a time based on what you select here in the current meter source. So you'll either pick ESC sensor or you'll pick onboard ADC and that'll choose either analog or ESC telemetry. You could wire both of them up and switch between them if for some reason you wanted to. Now here's an example of another flight controller. Oh, look, it's mine, my flight of the JPR Well, 4 How about that? Well, you know, okay, we'll go with it. We'll use that one as long as it's here. <laughs> this flight controller has a built-in PDB and it's got a built-in analog current sensor. It's designed for use primarily with individual ESCs. Uh, and if you use it with individual ESCs, then the current sensing is just automatic. But if you're using it with a four-in-one ESC and you don't wanna do this garbage, <laughs> then what you can do is you can use ESC telemetry and you're gonna wire ESC telemetry to an, a, a UART receive pad and on my flight controller that would be either RX4 or you could use the, you can actually use the, um, the S bus pad, which is UART1, if you're using RX6 uh, for, spectrum, for, for spectrum receiver. So basically any spare receive pad. Mm. Uh, you, some of you are wondering now, and now I've really gone off the deep end. Some of you are wondering, well, S bus is inverted. So can, can can that work? And it actually turns out on my flight controller, the S bus pad can uninvert itself if you set it to a function that doesn't require inversion. That's actually not true for most flight controllers that are, you would not normally be able to use the S bus pad. So I kind of shouldn't even have mentioned it. Never mind. Let's move on. And there you go. Now you know how to wire up current sensing on your flight controller if you're not using the built-in current sensing on that many flight controllers have and you know when i first started making this series four and one escs weren't as popular as they are today and this was much less of an issue people just bought an all-in-one flight controller they soldered their escs to the pads on it and current sensing just worked but now that more and more of us are using four and one escs I think a, there's a lot more appeal to getting current sense working without having to do that big thick wire garbage and, and and this is the way to do it either analog current sensing or esc telemetry as you go shopping for four in one escs in my opinion having at least analog current sensing i personally wouldn't want to buy a four in one esc that didn't have either analog current sensing or esc telemetry or hey best case both that's because I care about current sensing. But I have to acknowledge that many people out there don't care about current sensing. They're not data nerds like me. And some of these guys, you see top racers racing and they got voltage in their OSD and they don't care about amps. And I guess that works for them. But for me, I really like to know amps because I like to know, like when I put a new prop on or when I put new motors on, What's the difference in the amps that are being pulled? And I really like to know milliamp hours because if I, it especially tells me if a battery is not healthy or if a battery is underperforming. And frankly, I, it tells me if a battery is performing great. <laughs> if, I, if I've got a 1300 milliamp hour battery and I'm still at 14.6 volts and I've pulled 1350 milliamp hours out of it, oh, that's a great battery. So I like to know the milliamp hours as well. Anyway, there you go. That's how to set up external current sensing on your beta flight or fl flight controller. Uh, watch the whole rest of this series if this was interesting to you. If you want to learn about how to wire up ESCs, PDB, voltage regulators, receiver, telemetry, all of this stuff is in this playlist. Check it out down in the video description. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hey, I'm going to put a little plug for myself in here. I make this kind of educational content because I love educating you guys and helping you enjoy the great hobby of FPV. I do this as my full-time job. If you watched this long and you haven't tuned out yet, I know you liked it. I know you got a lot out of it. I have a Patreon. You can, you can subscribe to me at a couple bucks a month. It's very helpful. I also have other ways that you can support me by using the affiliate links down in, well, not in this video description, but in any of my video descriptions, use those affiliate links. This is very helpful. And uh, if you want to know more, I actually have a whole webpage uh, on my website about other ways you can support me if any of those kind of don't do it for you. Check it out. Thank you so much. Happy flying.